Hey guys, Jagus here, back with another build order video. Today's video will it be about chaos? Beautiful. So, um, I found a lot of openings for chaos. There are about six different openings, so this will be a bit of a long video. I would urge you to maybe look at the timestamps and maybe uh, pick an opening that you might want to try yourself. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd warn you first that this is going to be a bit of a long video because chaos has a lot of you know options for various things and I want to show them all to you today so I'm just going to get into a game I'm going to choose Emerald River today because it's a it's a bigger map these openings can work on small maps but I just want to show you how they can also excel in big maps as well all right let's start so as usual starting off with the standard opening obviously okay so what we're going to do is going to build a temple one heretic, two cultists. Force labor this temple a little bit. Make sure that when you use force labor, you don't um, use it all the way to red on your first building, like the Chaos Temple, because after that, you won't be able to use it on any of your other buildings. Like, yeah, you'll get the Chaos Temple out faster, but your other buildings will suffer because of it. So we're going to do that, and we're just going to go straight for the... Chaos Marine Squad and the Chaos Lord. Now, as you can see, we're not building the Plasma Generator because we need that extra 135 blue to build our listing posts. So, this squad will cover here and go here. This squad will cap this, cap this, cap this. Now, after building one listing post, we should then have enough blue to make the uh, generator. With this marine squad out we can do some harass and build the one listening post we'll just hurry this one along a bit and just keeping an eye on our heretics health that's good we'll just stop there and we just go out go out and scout see we gotta get some information we gotta see what our opponent is playing and what kind of uh, builds they're doing all right, so now we can go for the plasma generator. We should have enough blue to make the second listening post. Perfect. Cute. And force labor this one a little bit as well. And that's that done. And now we'll, we should have our supply of power. Let's just scout ahead, see who we got. Chaos Lord is out, set him to ranged. I feel like his, he's, uh, the Kessel does a very high range damage. So it's usually better to have him in ranged. Ah, Necrons. Great. Excellent. Love it. Um, God, I think I hate Necrons. One of the worst races. Not like just to go up against, not, they're, they're a good race, but man, they're, they hard, they hard to bring down. Okay. But this is. This is basically the standard opening done now. You just keep building your listening posts and build one more generator and upgrade to LP2s. So I have one LP2 already going. So second generator. The, at the same time all this stuff is happening, I go out and get some value. And this is basically it guys. I upgrade the last listing post, and then from here, I can go tier 2. But, that depends. If my opponent is really uh, pushing hard with lots of infantry squads and um, really pressuring me, I can make an extra uh, uh, marine squad if I want. If that's not the case, if if they have like... Mm, I'm trying to think here. If, they, if they're spamming units, I can just make the armory, which might be might be cheaper than making another marine squad just so I can get heavy bolters, plasma pistols, research the frag grenades and this should this sh that should be enough to just handle um, your opponent but other than that if they're not really doing anything else like now for example if your game's looking like this just go to tier 2 and while you're going to tier 2 keep harassing focus on your economy so on and so forth and yeah this that's basically it for the standard opening. So, I will move on to the next one. 
Okay guys, so the next two openings I'm going to show you, um, both lead to, they, they kind of like share a path into one, the, the, the third opening. And I'll put that up on the screen just as a little um, picture so you can uh, diagram and you can understand what I'm talking about. These two openings are the Chaos Lord Plasma Pistol build and the Nade Cultist Mass build. These two will branch together to make the Vehicle Mass build. So I'll just talk about the pros and cons of each so you can decide which one to choose from. So the Chaos Lord Plasma Pistol build, you're basically just uh, relying on the Chaos Lord himself to attack and defend. It's more expensive than the Nade Cultist Mass build, but the Chaos Lord is quite a durable unit and his Plasma Pistol does do a lot of DPS. And he can also one-on-one um, -on -one commanders pretty well with his passive ability, which slows down uh, any units that he attacks. So you can basically just chase down units while dealing damage until they die, which is good. And you can still equip your cultists with nades in this build, but that's entirely up to you if you want to spend the extra resources. Now the nade cultist mass build, you'll have four cultist squads, uh, each with two grenades equipped, and these squads will just decimate all those weak tier one infantry squads. The only problem, however, is that cultists are extremely weak. They have uh, the, some of the least hit points in the game, if not the least, uh, and they can die extremely easily if you're not too careful. So you've really got to micro well with this one. Um, if they die, then you'll be constantly having to reinforce them. That's an extra 20 requisition and then another 20 and 10 power for the grenades if you need to re-equip them. So this has the potential to be more expensive than the Chaos Lord Plasma Pistol build. Other than that, let's get into it. I'll jump straight into the Chaos Lord Plasma Pistol build now. So, Temple, Heretic, Cultist, for Slaver a little bit. That's good. For Slaver some more. Oh, sorry, we can start the generator. Yep, in this build we can actually start with the generator. Because we're not going to make the armory yet. And we just queue our cap orders. Great, once the temple is done, make the cast lord. Cool, now get our builders over to this point to start building our LPs. And okay, so we've got our power going, that's good. Did I cap order this one? I'm not too sure. Get this listing post going. And we will move the coldest with less HP over to this point. Because we're going to use this one once the listing post is done to build the armory. He has more hit points, so we can use the force labor. Chaos Lord on the way. So you are a little bit defenseless against aggressive early rushes. If that happens, then it's best to just make a, a Chaos Marine squad. Yeah, that's a good point actually. If you get rushed early, um, don't just rely on the Chaos Lord. He, he will die eventually and you'll, be, you'll have nothing. So it is best to just make like a Marine squad. If that's the case, we can speed along this armory a little bit. And as you can see, we will have enough blue to make the... Oh, I could have made it a long time ago. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention. Okay, and now we get the plasma pistols. So once we have our listening posts up, that is the end of the opening. Get our listening posts up, get two LP2s, get two generators. That's our opening. This is what I was talking about. We can get the grenades now if you want to. Just bear in mind that it will uh, cost you more. It's 20 requisitions, so that'll be 40, 20 power, 80, blue, 40, green. That's an extra 80, blue, and 40 green if you want to risk that. And now we have the plasma pistol, so we can go out and get some value. And we just build this up. Try not to kill our heretic. Have I got one LP2 going? No, I'll get one going now. 
And watch this. We can do some good damage against these Necron Warriors with a Plaza Pistol. Yeah, Chaos Lord is taking a bit of damage here. Maybe it would be better to go in melee. But I just wanted to show you like how much damage this uh, pistol can do. It's pretty insane, right? Very good against heavy infantry. Extremely good against infantry. So we, now we've got second generator up, second LP2 going up, and we're just gaining value. We're killing... I mean, Necron Warriors are free, so I don't know if this is really gaining value. They are expendable like this. However, Obelisks aren't. They're about 25 requisition each. And anyway, the more units we kill for Necrons, the more they're going to have to queue up again, and they only have the one building for that. So, this is, a, this is actually giving us some value. And we have enough uh, resource, so we just go tier 2. And that's it. Cool. That's the castle or pistol, pistol opening. You basically just run around and do some uh, shenanigans like so. Alright, so I'll move straight on to the next one. Okay guys, so the third opening, the Nade Cultist Mass Build. Let's just get straight into it. We gotta make the Armory, Q1 Heretic, and four Cultists. With this Heretic, we're gonna queue two more Generators. Get the second Heretic to start on the Generator. And we start capping points with the other Cultists. Force Labor a little bit. I'm pressing F to Force Labor, by the way. I should have probably mentioned that earlier. Stop, stop. It's good. Cap that, cap that. And as soon as our armory is completed, we will overwatch the grenades on the cultists. Set our cultists to range, that's important, because we don't want them to be attacking in melee. And, oh, get you to finish building. Overwatch every cultist that gets main, overwatch the grenades. Now you can make an extra squad if you want, I, I've seen that happen. Um, just for the extra mass, extra damage, extra toxicity. Oh, I'm just kidding. This isn't toxic. But you're allowed to do this. It's, it's fine. Uh, cool. Build the listing pose, and now we can go out with once. No, that's probably not a good idea. We'll just hang back a little bit. Wait till some of these are finished capping their points. And... Okay, so we're just getting our LPs up in the meantime, hoping our enemy doesn't rush us, but if they do, they kind of don't stand a chance against these grenades. So, okay, that one's done. Let's do that. That one's done. Do that. Lots of uh, screaming by these units here, but that's okay, that's chaos for you. Alright, so now we've got three squads. The other squad is uh, capturing a relic, but that's fine. We can head up with three squads, really, and we'll just build that listening post. Speed this one along a little bit. But now, basically, with our um, cultist nades, we can go out and harass. So remember, set to range. You can set this to stand ground stance as well so that they don't chase your enemy too far. That can be a problem sometimes. Uh, we'll just attack move on this strategic point. So it's kind of the same principle as the guardsmen with grenades. And... Cool. Let's say we're going to attack these Necron Warriors. Now, see, this is what I was talking about. Already our cult is... One just died with a grenade, so we, we've got to replace them. But these grenades do a lot of damage, and they also slow the enemy. So they're very powerful, right? But you want to be maximizing their range, so that your cultists don't die like mine did. You can shoot, run, shoot, run. It's all about micro... Oh, we can go tier 2. Um, yeah, so it's all about shooting, running, shooting... What I'm doing is I'm attack moving, moving back, press Q, move back, press Q, move back, press Q. So this is the strategy, right? 
and at the same time all this is happening, focus on your eco. Alright, so I'm going to save this point here, because I'm going to use this opening to segue into the vehicle mass opening. Oh, we got our other squad done. Cool, that's brilliant. Okay. Excellent. So that's basically it for the uh, cultist nade mass opening. On to the next one. Alright guys, so welcome to opening number four, the vehicle mass opening. Now this opening is split into two others, I'll name them opening 4.1 and 4.2. 4.1 will be the Defiler Mass opening and 4.2 will be the Hell Talent Mass opening. So 4.1, we'll start with now the Defiler Mass. So, uh, unpause the game. Uh, we're going to find our heretics. We want to build as many uh, listening posts as possible. We want to get, we want to stockpile power uh, quickly. And we need to research the vehicle cap increase as well. Cool. So while all that is happening, we can just wait until we get tier two, maybe attack a little bit, but uh, try not to let our units die too much. Basically, we're just going to try stockpile resources so that we can build the machine pit as soon as we hit tier two and subsequently make our vehicles. Oh, what were they shooting at just then? I have no idea. Cool, we are tier 2. Alright, so, find your heretic. Start building the machine pit. Definitely force labor just to get it out faster. Excellent. I'm actually going to save at this point. Alright, excellent. Because this will be the same principle for the other opening. Just getting this machine pit out as fast as possible. Now this this opening is a bit of a dirty one because it you get up to four at least four defilers, and defilers are extremely hard to kill. They have lot lots of HP and a lot of disruption with their artillery weapons. I'm going to research another vehicle cap increase just so that we can field more of these vehicles and build more plasma generators. If we want to, we can make one more listening post, LP2. But basically now we just sit and wait for our uh, defilers to queue up. So here's one. We set it to stand ground and range stance. We can move them out to our troops. In fact, we'll set the relic queue over here. It would have been nice if I made the machine pit a bit closer just so that they don't have to walk all that way, but that's fine. Build more generators. Just keep an eye on our power here, just make sure we have enough to build the next defiler. They are 150 blue and 260 green. Very um, hungry for that green power. But that's okay, we have enough. And as you can see, oh my god, that is disgusting. The big artillery gun on the defiler does so much knockback damage and it also slows down the enemy infantry as well you can see how i mean necrons already move slow but you can just see how much slower they're moving because of this and this is extremely hard to deal with especially if you're tier 2 with the fighters and your opponent's still tier 1 even if they're tier 2 there's it's just so difficult to deal with this kind of uh, aggressive uh, Flayed One's coming in, so we just run back a little bit and continue shooting. Now it is friendly fire damage, so our cultists need to move out of the way for this. But basically, yeah, the, I mean, this is the abuse. I call it abuse, but the game allows it, so you can do it. P players do this a lot. Um, and yeah, this is great. Our cultists are probably gonna die, but it's fine. We've got our <laughs> we've got our vehicles out now, so it doesn't really matter. Now, if you notice with the defilers, when you get a bit closer, they use that little auto cannon uh, at the front there, and that also deals very high damage to infantry squads. So maybe if you want, you can get a bit closer and just use that weapon to, you know, wipe out 
your squads, you don't go in melee because the fighter has a lot of melee animations that just make uh, killing enemies a bit slower. You just want to be quick and efficient, so use the ranged uh, melee cannon. It's much more efficient that way. But when it comes to like single structures that don't need to move at all, you can just get all your defilers and melee the crap out of it. And they will deal insanely high damage, like so. And while all this is happening, you're gaining so much value, because your defilers are very hard to kill and you're killing a lot of uh, your enemy. Basically, you can just eco at this point. You can just be like, I don't care. I'm just gonna, you know, research my globals. I'm, I'm pretty solid. I should run away a little bit because there are anti-vehicle gorse turrets there. But yeah, this is basically it. I can go to tier 3, get my possessed squads out, my obliterators out, and I'm already in a much better position than my opponent. So, that's basically it for this opening. On to the next one. Hey guys, so I'm going to drop a cheeky little hint in, in here. It's uh, it's a, just a quick one, but it's a very important one. So if you have your Defiler selected, and you want to attack somewhere where you know there are units hidden in the Fog of War, you can click this button, Attack Ground, or press G, which is the hotkey, and just click anywhere within the range of this red circle, like so, like here for example, and your Defiler will actually start shooting into the Fog of War like this and this can be great if you know your enemy base is here and you just want to you know cause some problems for your enemy it's a good definitely a good uh, little tip that you should definitely think about especially if you have more defilers just you can make them all start a barrage out in this fog of war um, it also works with the grenades say I want to start attacking at this location they'll just attack there it's best to use for um, firing into the fog of war where you know there are units and you kind of want to maybe like make them come out of hiding all that good stuff cool all right sorry on to the next one all right guys so opening 4.2 the held talon mess basically the same thing as the defiler mess everything leading up to this point is the exact same we've got our vehicle squad um cap increase researched now once the machine pit is done we just overwatch the hell talon pretty standard stuff right Hell Talons are cheaper than uh, Defilers, by a lot, 125 blue to 200 green. And basically what you want to do is you just want to, you want to um, get as many uh, out as possible, which I think the limit is 5 if I'm not mistaken. And so while you're doing this, you just focus on your economy a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to like repeat that, always focus on your economy. You need a good economy to win games. Oh, got some aggressive push here. Just gonna pull these cultists all the way back. Try not to waste, just suicide your units. Um, you, they will become useful later on, in some way or another. So the Hell Talon is an aircraft, so it can basically just fly over any impassable terrain. Can it fly over this? Oh wow, can even fly over that, great, cool. And this is why I use the big map for this uh, example, because what you can do is you can get all your hell talents together. I'm about to show you. Basically, you're just going to go fly straight over to your opponent's base. It's like the the land speed of tempest um, mess strategy for the space marines. That LP2 might go down. That's fine. And we're going to be focusing on breaking apart our opponent's economy. I am versing Necrons in this case, so they, they don't use requisition, but you will be aiming for listing posts if you're up against any other... Oh, pop full. Okay, you need to research this twice. I forgot about that. And we'll just do the tier 3 um, upgrade as well. Okay. Well, with these two, we'll just go out and just go for a hunt. These can also do decent damage to like weak infantry, even though they're specifically for uh, buildings and vehicles. Like it's doing pretty decent damage on these scarabs. Third Hell Talon out. 
think we might need to do the research one more time as well, actually. Because they are three squad cap, yeah. So we'll just stop that. Do one more research and then we'll be good. Uh, Wraith trying to be a bit cheeky here. So let's say we go over here. No, nothing there. All right. Let's go to the obelisk. Can research our globals if we wanted to. Cool. And now we just start this harass on the buildings. As you can see, with this many hell talents, we'll do a shit ton of damage. Take down these turrets first so that they don't destroy our um, vehicles. Uh, the Necron AI always does this. But just look at how quickly these turrets are going down. And these turrets aren't cheap either. They're 125 power per turret. And so killing five of these is going to give us a lot of value. If you're up against a Necron player, it's generally better to just uh, aim for the generators. I'm not going to worry too much about this. This is irrelevant to the tutorial. So I'm just going to show you like just how quickly these can bring down buildings. So this is why it's great on a long map, because your hell talents don't care about the terrain, they can just fly straight over to the base and deal lots of eco damage. You can target your enemy production buildings. The, the damage is just insane. Like look at this, holy crap, what is this? And we're already feeling pretty good, we're heading to tier 3 so we can get our possessed squads out and our obliterators. Even on the HQ, just look at how dirty this is. <laughs> crazy, crazy damage. And depending on where, what stage your opponent's at, they might not be able to deal with this too well. So, yeah, this is great. If, say, you're up against sisters and they start bringing out Celestians, just fly to some other part of the map far away from their base so that they have to chase you. And you can just wreck more of their, maybe, strategic points, if they have any, any other buildings they might have out in the open. But yeah, this is basically it for the Helltellen, uh, Helltellen mass build. I'll go on to the next one. Hey guys, so this opening was actually a little unplanned, but I'm just gonna, like, throw this one in here, just so you guys can do whatever you want with it. This is gonna be 4.3, the Fast Predator, um technique because we're only in f uh, five minutes into the game so i'll just unpause here so we're gonna make the predator um we need oh we got eight we don't have to we can research this once and then we don't have to research it anymore because we can just make spit out two predators i'm not sure um how this can be useful i think predators are just super tanky they can take a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage so maybe it'd be a good idea for, um, you know, just uh, this early in the game, you want to get something out strong that can deal with your opponent's infantry. Personally, I think I'd rather go for the Hell Talon approach just to uh, damage the eco more. But I just want to show you that this is a possibility. So we got our Predator out. We can sort of survive with just two Predators while we um, eco. Okay, let's say this is happening. We can. Or we can attack these Necron Warriors. Let's see how much damage it does. Yeah, it does pretty good damage, you know, against these heavy infantries. And 4000 HP, It's it can take. What's that? Two. Two upgraded Necron Warrior squads. Just focusing it down. That's actually pretty decent. This can get you a lot of value, honestly. So this is probably what it is, we're just stalling while we eco. I think this would be more cheaper than spamming vehicles as well, because what's that, 330 power for one, yeah. That's 660, 660 power total compared to say four uh, held talents, which is 800. So we are making good savings here and we are getting tons of value, I suppose. 
maybe this is a good build, actually. Now that I've seen it myself, this seems pretty good to me. Just wiped out one squad of upgraded Necron Warriors pretty damn easily. It's not easy to do this with other squads. And we can just head straight to tier 3. Extremely quick. How does it do for commander damage? That's pretty alright. Cool. Okay, well I thought I'd just show you this. This is pretty useful, I think. So do uh, what you will with this one. Alright, on to the next one. Okay guys, so this is build number 5, the Rhino Sting build. It consists of having two Chaos Base Marines equipped with bolters and a Rhino to drive around like mad across the map and harass your enemy. So, I'll just get straight into it. Build the Temple, Heretic, two Cultists. Build the Generator, second Heretic, start on the Generator. And we get these two Cultists to cap. Um, standard stuff. We can just force labor a little bit. Now this is one of my uh, more favorite openings to do. And it it does require a bit of a higher skill level to pull off. Because there is some uh, intense microwing involved. But when it pulls off, it pulls off really well. So, once the temple is done, we will make one Chaos Space Marine squad. Q cap orders. And now we just wait. So the idea here is to get our LPs up so that we can build the armory. Uh, which heretic has more health? That one. Okay. So he stays behind. Alright. Marines are out. These Marines can sort of hang around, defend, or you can go harass. Up to you. Probably want to build that one first. And once this LP is done, we can start the armory. Okay. Get the armory up as quick as possible. Get out here. Take right down to about there. It's probably good. Keep building listening posts. So we're going to be getting our um, aspiring champion earlier with the with his plasma pistol and the heavy bolters so once the armory is done for the great powers, you like, uh, we'll just do some queuing here now we research plasma pistols straight away we'll just build that listening post there and now we overwatch the expiring champion and the heavy bolters on the marine squad and we head over to our temple and we research the frag grenades now the frag grenades are also key in this because um, when you use them on enemy squads it stuns the squad and your marines will continue shooting that squad even while that uh, enemy is stunned. And oh my god this is just crazy you can... wow you can just reduce the squad to nothing in seconds. So I'm gonna still focus on our economy of course. Actually, you know what, we'll just cancel that and we'll just build. This one's done. And we'll just upgrade that. And build another generator. Always, you know, just want to keep your two generators up. Oh. Now we have two heavy bolters up. And their Spine Champion with Plasma Pistol, so we can go out, do some, uh, gain some value. Plus the grenades are up too, so I'll show you how those um, just can really do some awesome damage. We can harass... Uh, the good thing about Chaos is how they get their... the way they get their Heavy Bolters early on. It means that we can... Even if our opponent has LP2s, we can still a, a do some poke damage from a distance. And once we have enough resources, we'll just overwatch a second Chaos Marine squad and get that one out. And we're going to do the same with that one. Get the Aspiring Champion and the two Heavy Bolters. So we can get in close like this. 
and just wipe out some scarabs. Oh, Chaos Lord is in. We don't want to get in melee, so we got to run away. No shame in running away, guys. Okay, Overwatch, Overwatch. Now we're going to get two uh, upgraded Chaos Marine squads. And now that we have those two out, we just wait till we can go tier two. In about two seconds. Boom, there we go. Now we're on our way to tier two, and while we're on our way to tier two, we overwatch our Chaos Lord. We need the Chaos Lord because he'll be an extra, add an extra plasma pistol to the squad. So just some extra damage. Where's the Necron? There he is. Do some kite tactics here. So I'll grenade uh, this Necron Warrior squad here. And as you can see, they get stunned. They kind of freeze for a little bit. And it allows your um, Marines to just hose them down with the heavy bolters. It's, it's great. Just build another generator. We will need a little bit more requisition. We can even equip grenades just for extra, I don't know, damage or whatever. And while we're going tier 2, we just go out like this, do some harass. Uh, make sure you're using your heavy bolters because not many, well, yeah, some, some uh, you know, other factions have this great kind of high damage, long range uh, capabilities early on. So, but just, just, you know, make the most of it while you have it. Chaos Lord is out, attach him to any of these squads. And now we just stockpile. Okay, we're tier two. So we'll build our machine cult here, a little bit closer. Even there is probably, no, we won't build it over there. Just in that same location. Uh, if you have an excess of requisition like this, just add more squad members. That will just make them a bit tankier. And we go over to the armory, research Purge the Weak. You absolutely need this. It'll add more hit points to your squads. Improves the health of all squad members, that's what we want. Commander is now attached here. And having the commander attached as well will help provide you with some uh, detection with the tainted ore specs if you need it. You know, if you do, if you are getting attacked by stealth suits or something and you need to reveal them, you can use the tainted ore specs. Bear in mind, it will die by, and <laughs> it can just get one-shotted, so just make sure you kill your enemy, the, the infiltrated enemy, before that dies so that you're not, you know, in a bit of a pickle there. Now we queue up the Chaos Transport, Rhino Transport. Why did my voice go high just then? And we can also research heavy weapon increase once we have the power. Get our squads up to max heavy bolters for max damage. And we'll go do that now. And now we just get our troops inside the Rhino. And we basically just drive around. And we hunt out any, uh, you know, lone enemies like this, like these scarabs. Focus them down, as soon as they die, get back inside. Our enemies are trying to run away, we just chase them like this. Oh, could probably get a bit closer than that. And we just basically just run around like this, you know. Flayed ones try to be all tricky and, you know, get in our face, but we just run away. Come back to here, and we can just keep shooting. Get a bit closer, maybe. And just like this. Wow, nice solar pulse, dude. We'll just run away from that. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing in on any location. And once I stop there, my troops will disembark automatically. Then we just right click back inside. If we want to get our squads out, you just, you know, just click on the icons like that. But basically as soon as they get in, you just keep moving around. So this is where your micro skills will be tested a little bit. Whoops. That was bad. Come back a bit. And grenade. 
grenade to stun. Necronaut gets in your face, you just run away. And if your opponent can't micro fast like you in this situation, you'll just wipe out all his uh, units very easily. We can just keep, uh, you know, poking down this Necron Lord's health. Let one more squad out. And he's just gonna phase away. And we can also Berserk, just to do a bit more damage. So this is basically it. This is the Rhino Sting uh, build. Necrons isn't really the <laughs> best example to be showing this against. Uh, this works well against, you know, Tau. Definitely Tau with the Fire Warriors. Um, and yeah, like, this is great. I love this. I, th you can even do... I should have done this build for the Space Marine tutorial as well, because you can do it with Space Marines. You can do it with a, a pretty much any race that has uh, transports. It's it's great. It's a good... It's a very nice um, uh, strategy to catch your opponent off guard. So, yeah. That's it for this one. I will get on to the last one. Okay guys, for the 6th and final opening, we're going to be talking about the fast tier 3 build. Now this is a dangerous opening, it's basically you're saying screw it, I'm going all in, and you just go completely balls to the wall and focus all of your um, production and resources uh, just, to, just for going straight to tier 3. The idea of this opening is to hit um, tier 3 while your opponents are still in either tier 1 or tier 2 and you basically unleash your powerful units against their weak infantries and vehicles or whatever and they just cannot keep up with you. This is an all-in opening because while you're doing it you're completely vulnerable so you're assuming that your opponent's not going to be attacking you too much. I know in most beginner games often players are too afraid to attack each other so this could work in those situations However, if you get rushed, ah, it just disrupts the entire opening. You you suddenly have to, you know, make an army to counterattack. But if this works, you'll be able to go straight to tier 4 and just dominate all your opponents. So, without further ado, I'll get straight into it. So I'm going to go straight for the armory. One heretic. Now the armory is cheaper than the, um, the temple at this stage. So we just want that. And we're going to get two cultist squads out. Maybe you can make three as well. Just to cap more points faster. That's debatable. I'm not too sure about that. I haven't tested it. But just for now. We're just going to force labor these buildings up a bit. Like so. And great. Excellent. Cap out points. Cap more points. And once this hits 100... Oh, is that not built? I'm an idiot. Sorry, build, 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 build the temple. I was like, why is that not highlighted? Um, <laughs> yeah, so... That's right, it's a very minor delay. Once, that, once your power hits 125, go straight for um, tier 2. So already before the... Just after the first minute, we're already going tier 2. And meanwhile that's happening, we're just going to be building our listing posts up. For a little bit of defense, we can add grenades to our cultists. But I would only do that if I'm being attacked, to be honest. Just so I'm not wasting resources. With one of these heretics, actually, I will build an extra generator as well. Just to get a bit more power going. You can probably even just build two generators from the very get-go. Force labor that one up. And we're not going to research our LP2s. We're just purely focused on getting to tier 3. 
So keep on capping, get that blue money. And we are going to be hitting tier 2 soon. So I better quickly just get this LP up. Like so. Okay, we're tier 2 now. I'll just force labor this listing post so we have a bit of a um, build area. Ah, oh, great. Here come the Necrons. So I will have to build this then run. Uh oh. No, he survived. That's great. Okay, cool. Force labor this one up. And we will equip grenades actually. Okay, and then we build a sacrificial circle. And we will upgrade that listing post. And we'll build more generators. We need the power to get to um, tier 3. We can't use our false labor, so that's unfortunate, but that's fine. The grenades are up, so we'll just use this squad to um, get a bit of damage in there. Just to kind of say, you know, go away. I've got grenades, you should be scared, you should be afraid. Attack, what are you doing? See, now they'll start to run away, and we got an LP2 just for extra defense. We just need more power at this stage. So I'm just trying to get as much power as I can. But look at our time here, it's only been 4 minutes, and we're already going to go to tier 3 pretty soon. Once this is done, usually by this stage players are researching for tier 2, and we're going tier 3 right now. So that's good. My life is forfeit. As you can see those Necrons got scared and ran away, that's good for us. It's important not to let your heretics die, you, so that you know you can you keep building your uh, resource buildings where you need to. Now at this stage I can start upgrading list, uh, yeah, listing posts to LP2s just to get a bit more uh, resources when I go for those uh, very powerful tier 3 units. So I'll just... I think that was 3, 1, 2, 3? Yep, okay, I'm just gonna get the 3 LP2s and now I'm just gonna stockpile resources. So I'm basically just going to sit back and wait. I'm not going to go out and attack. I don't really need to. I'm just just, just going to wait it out. I'm repairing this, but that's wasting resources. So I'll just uh, leave that off for now. If they attack again, I'll just um, defend. So the possessed squad is 260 blue, 220 green. That's quite expensive. And the obliterators later on, uh, which we'll make with uh, the Demon Pit. Those are 300 requisition to, I think, is it 100 power? So yeah, quite a bit of resources that we need to keep stockpiled up here. Okay, great. So around about the sixth minute, we are tier three. We just make the possessed squad straight away. And with any free heretic, we will build the Demon Pit. That is a little frustrating. Please don't kill my heretic. So we'll just queue this over here. Ah, we will need to research the squad cap increase as well. Please build, please build, please build. Oh no. That's not good. Okay, we'll play it safe. You know what? We'll play it safe. Come back here build this here and we'll use these possessed squads to be disruptive. I'm actually glad this is happening because this is a good kind of like what if, what if you get attacked, you know, while you're, um, you know, doing all this, all this dirty stuff. So that's great. Our possessed squads making short work of these warriors, hopefully. Possessed squads have very good uh, high melee damage, and we can research the demonic fire just to um, 
I don't know if that does damage, but it definitely adds to morale damage. Okay, Obliterator Squad coming out. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to build the Chaos Temple once you have the resources. Chaos Temple or the Machine uh, Pit, up to you. So at this point, my opponent's going, what the hell, man? I just had these tier 2, you know, <laughs> Necron Warriors, dude. This is crazy. How am I supposed to deal with this? Yeah, he's tier 2. So this is great. And now my obliterators are done. I can jump them out here. And now my opponent can't really deal with this. I'll do the research for the teleporters. And now this is very hard <laughs> to stop. Assuming my opponent's still tier 2 or tier 1. By the 8th minute they should still be... Uh, still be that early in the game. I could just go around and wreak havoc. So it does look like the flames do uh, deal damage. Add more squad members to the obliterators. Now we just go and attack. Obliterators hauling ass here. And they will be... We'll focus the Necron Lord. With our possessed squad. Okay. And at this point we're focusing on our eco as well now. Now that we're out and about gaining value, we just... Now we have to eco up so that... Um, you know, we make up for that lost eco that we sacrificed getting this far. But look at all this value I'm gaining. I'm just destroying these flayed ones. No worries there. I can destroy these buildings. Get this Necron Lord dead. Very quick, very fast. And yeah, we can build the Chaos Temple. We might want to get our uh, Lord out so that we can research the Demon Prince. It's a bit difficult for these Possessed Squads to focus all these turrets. Oh, not really. Look at all that damage. They're doing good damage here. So now we just focus our opponent's resource buildings. Screw up the eco a little bit. This is very good for us right now. Very, very good. Kill off these generators because we don't want our Necron enemies getting too much power. So yeah, this is it. You, you, the Possessed Squad and the Obliterators is really all you need to start with. But while they're out getting value, you can segue into... Yep, Chaos Lord. And I already done that. Demon Prince Summoning. One other thing I probably should have done is gone the Machine Cult. So that I could research uh, the Chaos Energies much earlier and get the bloodthirster out these are all possibilities and yeah so that was it this is the fast tier 3 rush very risky move but as you can see it pays off very very well so guys let me know what you thought of this guide in the comments below. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun making this. There's so many chaos builds to do, so much to choose from, and it's all up to you to decide which one you want to use. And if you guys like the video, please leave it a like. Um, I don't care about subscribers or anything like that. I just want people to get, uh, you know, learn from these guides and, and use them and hopefully more people will play the game this way. But if you do leave the video a like, it will pop up more in people's feeds. You know, that's how the algorithm works. So if you could do that, that'd be amazing. So once again, thank you for following through to the end. And I will see you guys in the next one. See you later, guys. Sanity is for the week.